Will Levis and Anthony Richardson have the most on the line at the NFL Scouting Combine next week? We'll tell you why on this episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your co-host, Damian Parson, National Scout over at the Draft Network and your local running back guru. You can find me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. And guys, I know he wasn't here, you know, yesterday, but the champ is back. <laughs> Talk to him, Keith. Man, what's up? What's up, man? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network. And like my guy, DP, always teased me up, man. 2019 national champion, LSU Tigers, the best college football team ever. Simple, man. And like I said, we always here to bring you championship level uh, draft prospect and draft conversation. Um, and today we have a couple interesting topics to get into because we have the combine coming up. Um, but DP, why don't you kick them off with a couple of our sponsors first? Nah, for sure, for sure. Our, you know, today is episode is brought to you today by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And, and Keith, you were just talking about our segments. Man, and it's, it's combine, man. We got the combine next week. Keith, we want to go combine. ahead and get it going, right? Get people amped and get people hyped to, to really tap into it and get prepared for it. And guys, we're going to really get it started talking offense, right? You know, the, the positions that really make all the money and they get all the, 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 the fame and the notoriety. We're talking quarterbacks, running backs and receivers. We're going to tackle all three positions. Just kind of preview that today, Keith. So before we get into that, Keith, I want to ask you, man, because this is the senior bowl is gone. The shrine bowl is gone. You know, those two events are done. Right. And, and this is what they call the biggest interview of these young players uh, lives. Right. You know, being able to, to, to go to the Indy and interview with teams and everything for you. How important is this week uh, for these players and if, for you as an evaluator? Yeah. So I, I, as an evaluator, right, I think this is more so checking the boxes. But it is important at the end of the day, right? Because you want those guys that you feel like they ran fast on film, you want them to test well, right? And, and, and those quarterbacks, you feel like they're accurate quarterbacks. I want to see you throw an accurate football, right? And then you also get to see them just in another football environment as far as their peers at the end of the day. You know, see who interacts with who, who is out there competitive. And you can always pick up on small, nuanced things where you're like, okay, how that guy handled it, right? And I always think about last year, DP, when we talked about Traylon Burks. And remember, there was a conversation about, up until this point, Traylon Burks was a, a 4-3 guy, um, you know, 6-3, is going to run a 4-3, all of these things. But then I remember that I personally had questions, right? And, you know, just about his route running, and I didn't think that he was going to run a 4-3. Um, yeah. but just overall, I see a receiver prospect, and then you know, you're watching the combine on TV, and then guess what happens? You see Michael Irvin working with him, showing him how to run a detailed route. And that for me, that was a light bulb moment because I'm like, that was something that I noticed in the film, right? And so that's the reason why you watch the combine. It's for the it's for the detail, it's for the nuances. Is it the whole puzzle? No, but it's definitely a piece of the puzzle. So I don't put all my stock in okay, a receiver ran fast, he's gonna be a really good wide receiver, right? Because we we've seen that that doesn't translate. But also we've seen guys like Kelvin Johnson get up there without his own cleats on, throw some cleats on, two sizes too small, and then run a four three. And then guess what? The guy became a hall of famer, right? Because you knew that that athleticism was gonna translate. And it was pure dominant. So it goes both ways, DP. I think it's just important to just put it in proper perspective, not to get put too much on it, but then also not to just totally negate it and not give it any value at all. No, I'm with you. And I pretty much lockstep. I feel like you have to value it, right? Like you said, all the points that you that you hit on, Keith, you have to value it. You just don't overvalue it, right? Like if you watch the tape and you had concerns that Traylon, like like we did, right? If we had those concerns that Traylon Burks is not a 4-3 guy and instead of him running a 4-5, he actually ran a 4-3, right? So we, we have the concern that he's not 4-3, but he runs 4-3. That's not going to make me push him up the board. It's like, okay, good time he clocked in. I know a lot of these kids work with track coaches and everything to get that 10-yard split down, the 20-yard, the flying 20, flying 30, flying 40, things like that, so that they can master this specific drill, right? So 
regardless of what happens, don't throw out the notes that you wrote down when you initially watched right. the tape. At the end of the don't day, throw don't throw them out. Like, keep those notes, man, because just because he ran fast doesn't mean he's a good route runner, right? Just because right. he jumped high doesn't mean that he's he plays with that level of explosiveness off the edge as a pass rusher, right? So that's what that's, those are the things I look at, Keith, is to me the film will always be 80 to 85% of what we do. In terms of importance, but the senior bowl, shrine bowl, um, you know, the combine and of course the analytics part of it finishes out that last 20 percent. So, you know, just don't overvalue what happens in shirts and T-shirts, but still value it at the same time, because it is important for guys to go out there and perform at the way that we expect them to, Keith. But talk about performance, Keith. Quarterbacks, man, you know, the darlings of the NFL. You know, the guys you can't touch or can't breathe on, those guys, Keith, you know what I'm saying? Like, those guys are so pivotal. Everybody's chasing that next un- – oh, not even unicorn because my term is alien. They're chasing that next alien, right, the Josh Allen, the Lamar Jackson, the Justin Herbert, and Mahomes, those guys that have all the physical tools and traits to really, like we talked about, you know, you know, last week, be a truck. And, and, and Keith, I want to know, what, what, what quarterback do you feel needs to impress next week and then what are you looking for with them in terms of, you know, getting on the field and, and performing in the drills? Yeah, so, okay, I'm going to list off my my guy my guys at quarterback that I'm looking forward to, man. And, it, and it's a lot of fun names, right? It's it's Anthony Richardson finally seeing him in person. Then you have Bryce Young wondering what are the measurements going to be. C.J. Stroud, I really want to know how fast is this guy, right? Because some people are saying he's not, you know, he's an average athlete. Some saying it's like, hey, this guy can run a little bit, right? Then you have Dorian Thompson. Robinson right at UCLA, another dual threat quarterback. You have Will Levis. We get to see what type of athlete this guy really is because everybody's telling us he's a really good athlete. And guess what? I'm going to get into it right after this. Think about being on the go and needing a delicious treat because you can't stop for a hearty meal, but you don't want the fat or the calories. Then you got to try Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Why does it taste that way? Simple. It's made from 100% real chocolate. And I'm telling you now, guys, you can go online and order and use our promo code, or you can go and do what I did. I went to our local uh, our local Walmart. It's right there in the pharmacy section. I got me a small box, a four-bar box of Built Bars, the cookies and cream variety, right? Now, you could also go to uh, your local Costco. If you want to be a buy-in bulk person and you want to be fancy, you can do just that and get you a 13 bar box of built bar in different flavors i'm telling you now but what you should do is invest in it because it will help you throughout the day stay filled stay energetic and it gives you that nice smack of protein so go to builtbar.com and use our promo code today locked on 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your next order all right keith so we talked about you know you you, you kind of highlighted getting into these quarterbacks right and, you know, you, you listed your, the guys that you're interested in seeing. For me, it's a lot of the same names, right? Like the, the, the same names you listed, especially Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. And I feel like the one guy that, that, that truly needs this week or should, should come out and perform at a high level is Anthony Richardson. And when I, I, I'm going to say this, Keith. I don't want him to pull a Lamar Jackson and not run the 40. Run it. Run it. Run it. Run the 40. Hit four, 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 three. Give us some crazy number. Okay, right? so all right, uh, you know I always gotta, you know I always gotta challenge you a little bit, DP. <laughs> if he runs the forty, and let's say he runs a four, five, five, right? Mm-hmm. Then where are you with that, right? Like, does does that change? Because we know that the forty is important when it comes to hype, right? And what the media can drive, and what fans are willing to buy in. You know, general managers pay attention to that, just as far as you know, own, well, ownership pays into it, just as far as hey, like you know, who does my fan base want to see, right? Like, who are they going to yeah. buy tickets to come and see? So my question is this. If Anthony Richardson runs a 4-5-5, right, the, is there is the same hype around Anthony Richardson um, moving forward? Because we do understand it's the quarterback position. So you don't need to be able to run a 4-3. But if the bar was set at 4-4-5 or 4-3, and then now you run a 4-5, right, how do you feel about that with him as a prospect? And then, like, like you said, right, should he run it, if the variance is high, right? Like if this guy's yeah. a, a four four flat or he can run a four five flat. So yeah. should he still run it with that being a perspective? I won't get your perspective on that. 
I say you still run it mainly just because you show everybody that you are that that top tier competitor, right? That you know it doesn't really matter that you're going to go out there and compete in every single thing that you can, you know, because we we listen to remember last year, right? Like we listened to who was it, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, you know, basically raking right. Kayvon Thibodeau across the coals, hot coals, man. Just, you know, because he didn't want to finish, you know, working out the drill. He's like, I'll do the rest of the things at my at my pro day. And they acted like it was going to be a detriment to him as a rookie. Well, he had a really outstanding rookie season, Keith. So, you know, I feel like he should go out there, just compete. You know what I mean? Go run. If you hit a fourth, if, if you if you check in at six foot four, 240 and you still bust a 445 people still going to you know people still going to rock with it they're still going to love it right, right. they they're not going to love it as much as if you hit a 435 right if you <laughs> you four, you come in at 64 240 and run a 435 then yeah it's a little different that's that's you a know? different type of love 433 love, love. love is is, is different type of it's love it's different right? baby so like i feel like he should still do it because then you set the bar that i'm here to compete in every drill possible right you do the the the, the broad jump right you run the agility drills of course but you got to be strategic too keith because we've seen guys that okay i know i'm not going to test well in this i'm not going to do it you know what i mean like if i know if i'm not going to run a good three cone or a, a good short shuttle 20 yard shuttle whatever what have you the agility drills if i know that i've timed poorly in that in my training then no you we've seen a lot of guys skip certain drills so of course use your head in it but for the things that you know that you can do well go out there and compete and of course get on the field and throw that show that velocity, right? You we all see that we've seen when Josh Allen went to the combine where that 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 go ball drill, right? Because then those scouts are looking for it for him to just let it go, the flick of the wrist, like you talked about yeah. in your report. So okay, cool. So we talked about the 40 yard dash. You mentioned Anthony Richardson, right? But like you said, you just mentioned the go ball, you just mentioned passing the football, right? So let's talk about the guys that we want to see throw the football. We talked about Anthony Richardson running a 40 yard dash. Who do you want to see throw the football? Because I know for me, it's Will Levis, right? I mm -hmm. I, I want to see you get out there and just short. And, and I know this is not football, but I want to see you doing a shorts and t-shirt because when you in shoulder pads and helmet, you didn't do it. So let me see if you can do it in, in shorts and t-shirt, to be honest, because I didn't see it in shoulder pads and helmet, right? So if somebody's going to sell me, if there's going to be a, a Tom McShay, a Daniel Jeremiah, somebody's going to tell me, hey, this is the number one prospect. Well, damn it, he better be able to do it in shorts and t-shirt, right? Because that's what everybody tells me, that that's the easy part of playing quarterback, just dropping back and ripping a football. So I definitely, I, I don't, I want to be wild by it, right? I want to be like, damn, that was good. Because, man, like the film, let's be honest, it was simply not there. But we've heard every rhyme of reason to why Will Levis was not successful throwing the football, right? We heard the, um, you know, the offensive coordinator switching offensive coordinators. We heard they told him don't run the football. We heard that Wondell Robinson was only 5'8". Then we heard Wondell Robinson was gone. Then we heard he had two freshmen. Then we heard his, his O-line wasn't that good, right? So we've heard every excuse. Sounds like you're line. writing a book, Keith, when you when you go. Man, like, it sounds it's, like a it's, book. There's so many different chapters, man. There's so many different chapters. So this chapter is Will Levis. You're in shorts and T-shirt. The competition is even, right? Y'all all have NFL caliber players to throw the football to every single quarterback i want to see you get out there throw the football just make it look easy right and then give me something to buy in on so my guy throwing the football is will levis dp who's your guy man you know will levis anthony richardson i want to see bryce i want to see bryce go out there and, and sling it man mainly because we know what the difference is going to be the arm talent that he he doesn't have that that upper echelon type of arm strength right, right. so we understand that you know, from watching this tape, but the kid's accurate. His ball placement is, is is superb and outstanding. You know what I mean? The timing and touch that he puts on passes, just feathery, man, real feathery. And I want to see him just be able to – I, I want to see him do what Mac Jones didn't do at his pro day, and that's be able to walk into this venue, and when you need to put velocity on it, put velocity on it, but control it. Because I remember it because that was when COVID happened. Mac had you know, Alabama held two pro days. And Mac Jones right. was out there trying to show people I can throw deep. I have a strong arm. But you didn't, but you're not completing these passes, Mac. Like you're overthrowing the receiver by, 20, by 10 yards because you're just putting everything into it. So it, it's not good to go out there and 
try and put so much velocity in it if you don't have the spin control and the accuracy to still put the ball where the receivers can make a play. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be the quarterback. Remember a couple years ago, I think it was uh, out of Buffalo, Tyson Jackson or something like that. Uh, yeah. Big, tall. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think he converted the tight end. Steve Smith ripped him a new one during the broadcast because he was out there throwing missiles during the gauntlet drill to the receivers. He wasn't giving them opportunity to look good, Keith. So I think that that's what I want to see with Bryce is be able to Give the give the receivers chance and, and opportunity for them to look good. If they ran a good route, put it on them, right? So you can get the oohs and ahs, and and, the, and people make their checks. Like, yeah, Rasheed Rice came out of that curl drill real nice, and the ball was on the money. You know what I mean? Don't have those guys trying to reach across their head outside their frame. It shouldn't be like that, Key. So I want to see Bryce throw just because I want to see him uh, put the velocity, show the velocity he has. It, it may not be the best, but show what you have, but they also control the ball at the same time. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think Bryce is going to do well in this in this drill. I, I think he, he needs to go in there, right, immediately, get the height weight thing out of the way, right? Go in there, get weight, get your height, if you're going to do it, right? If you're going to do it, just get it the hell out of the way because you want to move on as fast as possible and then get to doing what you do best, right? You may don't, you, you may, you're not going to win the, um, you know, the height weight conversation. There's no Olympics that Bryce Young is going to win and hop off the bus and physically impress people. We know that move the hell on, right? But we know that the guy's a hell of a football player. So if I'm him, I'm like, man, look, okay, cool. Weigh me, height me. And then guess what? Let's get into throwing this football because that's what I've been doing since I've been 10 years old, right? I've competed at a high level throwing the football. So I'm interested to see Bryce Young, um, you know, in that situation, just, you know, going out there and, and, and then showing the person, right? Because we know that obviously he's small, but if this is a guy that can show that he's a leader out there, right? Like if he's a little bit vocal, um, you know, going after it, if you see wide receivers gravitating to him, I think it could be really big for him. So that's the guy that I'm looking interested to. Um, and then, you know, just, we, we, we need to discuss where he's you know like where he's going to go after that right because i think that's the biggest thing we know he's qb1 as far as you know early mock draft and simulations and things like that but i, I think he uh that is going to be really big for bryce young but dp you know we talked about the the, the the top four right we can call those the core four guys but you know what i really want to get into i want to get into those those day two, those day three quarterbacks, um, and discuss what guys that we have on our radar, um, that can possibly elevate. And right now, nobody's talking about, but maybe week 16, week 17, the next year, we're talking about as starting quarterbacks in the NFL. So, coming up, we get into our day two and day three quarterbacks and discussing who everyone should be on the lookout for. What is the best sports book in America? FanDuel. And if you are a new customer to the site, that is great for you. Great news because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. All you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to threes drained if you're talking about in the NBA to Passes caught or touchdowns. If you're talking about NFL, you can build your NBA bets each week. Player props, points, rebounds, assists. You can even be exclusive with the, the NBA bets or bets in general. Two, three pointers scored in the first three minutes of a game. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL and the NBA. All right, Keith, we, we, we've talked about Bryce. We, we mentioned C.J. Stroud a little bit. We talked about Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. This is pretty much the quarterback, you know, preview show, uh, you know, heading into the combine. But let's talk about some of those guys, right? You know, those, those day two, day three guys. Keith, I mean, one of the teams that was in the NFC, in the NFC championship game had a mystery relevant at quarterback. <laughs> the the that, last guy drafted. That's what... That's why this is important, right? It's easy, like I said, to talk about the core four guys, but I think there was some crazy stat where, like, it was like 59 different starting quarterbacks this year. So that's why this segment of this podcast is important, right? Because one of these quarterbacks is going to start next year, and it's not just yeah. the, the the top four guys. It's it's somewhere, some one of those guys that's 
day two or day three, they're going to be starting for someone's team. Someone who's listening, one of these quarterbacks is going to be starting for your team, and your playoff chances are going to be on the line with one of these guys. So, DP, like I said, I'm going to kick it to you, man, because I want to get one of your guys um, and, and let me know who are you thinking of when it comes to, um, you know, just a, a possible day two or day three guy that can make some noise. I think day two is where this guy is going to land, Keith. And, and you know, I, I grade him out as a fringe – Three, four, um, but you know the the physical tools of what he has. Stanford quarterback Tanner McKee, man, you know you, you, he's kind of a throwback a little bit. You know, six, this is six five, six six, big arm. You know what I mean? He can make all all the throws, all the NFL throws, all those different cliches that we throw out there, those buzzwords and scouting reports. He can do all of that, Keith. The out routes, the go ball, the tight window throws. He can put it on the money because he has that velocity and that, and that arm talent to not just hit you in the short to intermediate, but to push it vertically down the field. And I just want to see him, you know, just go out there and see what, what he runs, right? Because that's the thing. Like, he he's – not the most mobile guy, and they, they they ran some, they implemented some slow, you know, deep mesh like Wake Forest runs, you know, in, in Stanford this year, which was odd to see because you're putting a big, high hip uh, quarterback in a compromised yep. position to try and get his feet back aligned. Or like, you know, shout out to you know JT O'Sullivan, he talks about being you know dovetailing it and getting lined up to throw. So, like, I want to just see him move, right? I want to see what he does if he runs the 40. What does he run? I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a 4'9", maybe, you know, 4'9 guy. He's got a long stride, and, and he could pick him up and put him down a little bit. But I just want to see him go out there and, and, and show any movement skills that he has, but then also throw on the ball, right? Show off that arm talent in those yeah. on those throws, those deep ball throws. Yeah, so it's funny, right, how, how far the NFL has came and probably – Five to ten years, because ten years ago, around that Matt Ryan is first overall. Yeah, he's going <laughs> number one overall, right? We're not even worrying about if he can run. So we went from, oh no, we don't want a quarterback to run to, man, if he can't run, I don't know what he's going to be able to do, right? So it's it's I'm crazy out. how that narrative has consistently shifted, and, and and you know they the NFL has moved the barometer so far to the other side, man. Uh, but I, I like Tanner McKee, but I think I'm gonna go more with. Um, a new school feel of uh, this modern day when I talk about a day two or day three prospect. And I, I have two names I'm going to bring up, man. First is Hendon Hooker. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, he's not – I don't think he's going to be participating. Obviously, torn ACL, he's not going to be participating. But just for – the, the you know for our listeners right and and somebody that they should still be looking at because he's going to get drafted right and we know that this guy has a big arm he exploded on the scene he's a dual threat guy we got a chance to talk with him at the senior bowl and you're talking about a guy that that appeared to have a level character just in conversation and people still gravitating towards him and he had a flat out presence about himself at the end of the day right so and i think uh, when i think about him and hooker i think about the 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 keep it simple method right the the, yeah. the kiss method when they say keep it simple was mean listen this guy's been productive right he has a torn acl but he's been he's been productive in the nfl he can throw the football he's mobile somebody can work with it so i think this is a day two guy that he's going to get drafted he may fall to the third round and then he may end up starting and then everybody in the nfl community is going to be sitting there like damn man how do we pass up on him well y'all didn't keep it simple man just do do the simple <laughs> thing man the guys that produce man take the guys that can produce that have a presence about themselves but translate transferring to somebody that's going to be an active partic participant is dorian thompson robinson because mm -hmm. man what, what if this guy goes out there runs a four or five right then he has a beautiful deep ball then he's hitting those skinny posts right then he's hitting those comebacks and then i think everybody's now talking about him and he falls in line with these modern day quarterbacks at the end of the day right he's one of those guys that is is mobile he can run he has a good arm he's proven that he's a leader right this ucla team was in the dumps when he first took over at quarterback and then now they are a pretty successful uh program right him chip kelly they got it back together so dorian thompson robinson is definitely somebody i'm looking forward to man i i just want to see him ball out and see what he can do no, I like that, man. Like you said, the, the athleticism, he's a gamer. He's a baller. And just be, be able to see him go out there and do his thing, um, you know, will, will be interesting, right? And with Hinton Hooker, he's probably not going to play much as a rookie due to the, how late he tore the ACL. But I talked to him in, in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, and you talk about such a – just an awesome dude, just really good, mm -hmm. high character, 
you know, really respectful. You know what I mean? It made me feel old at times. You know what I'm saying? He hit me with the yes, sir. And I was like, I ah, don't do that, bro. Like, you know what I mean? don't, do, don't do that to me. But he's he a real cool guy, man. Easy to talk to. He spoke to anybody that 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 wanted his that, that wanted to get a quick interview or quick word from him. And, and he he didn't mind it at all. So, you know, you think about a guy, a team, teams that that you know, the Saints or you know, just teams that need a future at the quarterback position. Like, yeah, he's 25 and all that type of stuff, but he's got game, man. The mobility, like you said, the arm, he's got good arm. Um, he can make plays off platform and, and you can really run a lot of the new, the new age stuff, right? The, the zone read, the QB keepers, QB power, all that type of stuff. You can run that stuff with him, QB counters, but not so, you know, same thing with DTR, man. It's, it's going to be, for him, it's good. like people going to hit him with the size, right? Like he's not the biggest guy. But can no. he go out there and answer the questions and answer the bell and really take care of business? I think he can. And I'm, I'm really going to be locked into him because his tape is good. He's, he's had some good moments on tape over the last two years as a starter, Keith. So, you know, if you, you know, people that – if you're somebody that – and I always kind of try to teach people to stay away from this. Be, don't don't be a BMI person, you know, body mass index, because that's how you yeah. miss on Devonta Smith when you're like, oh, yeah, he's 160. You're like, yeah, but if you watch him play, he plays bigger than his yeah. size, right? But don't also don't be a don't don't be a hype merchant, man. Don't be, oh, he doesn't, you know, he's not six foot, six one, whatever, no matter what the Just position don't, is. Don't be one of those people that have a, a strict threshold because yes. we've seen so many different successful versions, man. We've seen six, seven quarterbacks fail. We've seen five, ten quarterbacks be successful. I mean, Ryan Mallett was 6'6", Kyler Murray was 5'10 on a good day. You know what I mean? And, and one person st- one person got a multi-million multi-year deal for a lot of money. So it just tells you that 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 sometimes that stuff doesn't matter. You draft good players and you trust the tape and trust the evaluation. But man, Keith, you know, you know, Ryan Tracy's my guy, but it's always good to have my boy back in the fold, man. And, and yes, as sir. you guys know, as you guys know, we're gonna be previewing the uh the NFL Combine all week, man. We just want, like again, we want to thank you for making Locked On your first listen today. Um, tomorrow's episode, we're gonna tap into some running backs. Keep, you know, we're gonna okay. talk about your know, little Bijan, some Jameer Gibbs, and all that. <laughs> you know, tap into these top running backs, man, and really get into that position. And this is a deep class, so we want to talk about it, man. But find us on Twitter. You can find me at DP underscore NFL. You can find Keith Sanchez at the Talent Code on Twitter as well. Come join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On. Podcast Network, your team every day.